Everyone knows that a plant needs light to grow, but not many people know that the colour of the light will affect how the plant grows in different ways. The colour in visible light have different wavelengths and those wavelengths provide different levels of energy to the plant, depending on whether they are short or long wavelengths. In this experiment, we will examine what effects different colours of light will have on the plant. We, all, we will do this by growing plants exposed to five different colours in the visible spectrum, from the lowest to the highest wavelengths. These are purple, blue, green, yellow and red. We will also grow a plant in normal white light conditions as a control experiment. We will measure the heights of each plant, the lengths of their stems and the lengths of their leaves to see how different colours affected the growths of these parts of the plants. For this experiment we'll be growing runner beans. <coughs> We start by selecting the seeds for our experiment. For fair and accurate results, we need to, to select seeds of approximately the same size and weight for each of the different experimental conditions. We weighed each of the seeds, sorting them out in groups according to weight ranging from 1 to 2 grams. The majority of seeds were in the 1.2 gram range, so we selected 12 seeds within this range. We'll be growing two seeds for each of the six colours we'll be examining. We filled six containers half full of cotton wool. We are using cotton wool rather than soil, so we can easily observe the growth of the roots and shoots. This is also to ensure the soil conditions are equal for each of the experimental conditions we are examining. We then place two seeds on either side of each container <coughs> between the wall of the container and the cotton wall. About a third of the height of the container, this is to give lots of room for both of the plant's root systems to grow. Make sure when you place the seed in the container, the eye of the seed is clearly visible. This is where the action is all going to happen. The roots and shoots will emerge from here. Also make sure the cotton wool is not packed in too tightly so as to give roots a lot of oxygen to breathe in. We then covered the walls with of five containers with clear plastic of the colours we are testing. Purple, blue, green, yellow and red. This will ensure that only light of that colour enters the container to nourish the plant. Once the container will be one container will not be covered with plastic and will be exposed to only normal white light. We then placed the containers under a bright white fluorescent light. Make sure it's white light and not yellow light. You, you would see in most light bulbs. We then start the growth process by watering the seeds. Make sure the plants are regularly watered at least twice a day during the course of the experiment. Finally, we cover the tops of the containers with lids of the corresponding colour. We will now leave plants to grow for the next weeks and see what happens. After around two weeks, you will see some of the plants have grown out of the containers, so we'll have to attach more coloured plastic to increase the height of the container wall. 
you can see that some of the plants already appear to be growing much better than others. At the beginning of the third week, you can now remove the cold plastic and start recording your, your measurements. Remove the plant from the container and lay it on the flat surface. Make sure you do this gently so you don't accidentally break off any stems, leaves or branches. We first measure the full height of the plant. This length is where the stem leaves the seed to the tip of the shoots at the top. We then measure the length of the stem. This is the length from where the stem leaves and from where the first branch of the plant is formed. We measure the length of the largest leaf found in the, on the plant. Also note down any other interesting ob observations. For example, with a plant exposed to green light, we saw that one of the plants grew normally, but for other plants, experienced stunted growth. It only grew a few short height, but had a very thick stem compared to the other plants. Make sure you write down all your measurements in a table as you record them. Here are the results of my measurements using the data from this table. You will see that the tallest plant was was one grown was red surroundings and grew up to 470 millimeters in height. It also had the longest stem and leaves. The shortest plant was one of the ones growing in yellow light and it also had the shortest stem. The plant that had the smallest leaf was surprisingly one that grew in green light. I then drew graphs to more clearly compare the results from the different coloured environments. In terms of plant types, growing in red light gives you the best results. The poorest results were plants growing in yellow light. The plants growing in red light grew to nearly one and a half times the height of the plant growing in yellow light. Similar, similar results were seen for the stem lengths. The longest stem length was seen in the plant growing in red light and grew to over twice the length of the stem in the plant in the yellow light. In the terms of the leaf length, again, the red light produced the largest leaves. The smallest leaves were produced by the green and blue lights. The colours visible in visible light have different wavelengths and those wavelengths from the lowest wavelengths in violet and purple and at the end of the spectrum to the highest wavelengths in red in the red and orange parts of the spectrum. Depending on whether they are short or long, these different wavelengths provide different levels of energy. The transformation of this light energy into food in a plant is called photosynthesis. From our experiment we can see that the light in red wavelength seems to appear to provide the most energy for that plant growth while light in yellow wavelength provides the least. The green light is also not effective for plant growth because plants themselves are already green due to the pigment of chlorophyll and therefore do not absorb the green light. Knowing how the different colours of the light can affect what a plant does is important because we can now design the light, a lighting that will encourage, encourage crops to grow faster or produce more fruits or grain. This knowledge can also help us when we explore the universe and colonise other planets.
we now we now understand how well crops grow when we inhabit other planets and that we have different light conditions to our own. For example, in planets orbiting cool red supergiants or hot blue stars. Thank you for watching.